Peace, family. How y'all doing? We are now live. We are now live. Y'all absolutely loved my last discussion with Professor James Small. So I want to thank the brother for coming on last time. Um, he did an absolutely magnificent job in uh, speaking. And um, today we're having another wonderful discussion. And this time we had to bring my brother Noah Felder along uh to join the conversation nova welcome to the to the uh show my brother peace family peace professor james small yes, welcome sir. back the same to everyone indeed indeed and thank all of the family for hitting me up with those nice cash apps that helped a brother get over i gotta tell you man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that. Is. you know i drive yeah. to brooklyn every day that's mm. what I run every day sometimes four hours yeah because like my lady she's 69 now i can't have she has to go to work one more year but mm. walking up and down stairs is yeah. hard I said, i'll drive her drive her back that's yeah. like going to dc every day yeah yeah yeah, yep. yeah that's magnificent man how long how long you been married uh professor small how long you been 50, with you 51 years that's what? beautiful that's beautiful that's beautiful brother that's Amazing. inspiring that's aspiring to a brother like me. Say, yeah, that's a tough lady. She put up with this for 51 years. Mm. Mm. <laughs> you ain't an easy I, one, Professor. You know. <laughs> you no, that's true. I'm, I'm not, because I'm fussing every day to try to get it right. So that's everybody right. can like, you're always fussing. You're always angry. I'm never angry. I'm mm. trying to get the point over. Yeah, yeah. I hate mm -hmm. it. Let's, um, let's get to our family. Well, let me welcome the family in the chat room. I want to welcome everybody joining us. We're going to have a magnificent show tonight, um, as usual, you know, and um, share. Yeah. Hit the like button, share the video, let your friends and family know we're live and that they will. Uh, school is in session. Uh, we're going to get to some ads real quick and then we're going to start the show. All right, family. First and foremost, I want to give a shout out to my brother, King Simon, one of the best when it comes to numerology. Text me your full name and date of birth, 347496 one zero two two family he also has a course on udemy.com an introductory course and that course will get you more familiar with his full eight hour uncut raw course that he has also family i need all y'all to check out blackmagicuniversity.com we got some magnificent workshops on there and we're adding physical products real soon family i'm, I'm gonna have the most amazing physical products in the world that you could imagine on that website get familiar with it family black magic university it's taking over the world, all right. Oh. Shit, this is this is the university right here, also. You know, we we doing we in school right now. Um, March 9th today. Today is March 9th, family. Mm -hmm. A lot of the hip hop heads know today as the day that uh Biggie Biggie's birthday. Is is it Biggie's birthday the day he made his transition? Transition. The transition, yeah. The day the day big made his transition, March 9th. Shout out to B.I.G. And uh, everybody that contributed to his um, his work and his music, uh, definitely an amazing lyricist. Uh, we're going to have a great conversation uh, before we get started. This show is actually dedicated, uh, as you can see, it's called The African Perspective of Life After Death. And this show, family, let me just let you all know, is dedicated to this brother right here. His name is Rock, and uh, he was a good friend of all of ours. And also a business partner of Professor James Small and uh, Nova Felder. So um, good brother, good stand-up, solid brother. So I want to um, say a rest in power, rest in peace to this brother, um, Rock, um, that I want to allow the elder. Is there anything you would like to say, my brother James Small, before we start the show, as far as this brother that just made the transition? Yes, sir. This is one of the finest young sons, young men I've, I've ever met. That wasn't my blood, it's finer than some of my blood. When we were putting together the hotel project in Ghana, mm -hmm. um, some 16 years ago, almost 17 years, mm -hmm. some people just laughed at us. Oh, you need to go buy a hotel? No, but please, Ghana, they just laughed. I went to this brother, so I need somebody to move with me and roll with me. For 15 years, we went to Ghana at least three times a year. Wow. You know, sometimes we stayed as long as three months working on this project. Um, you don't find a blood like that. Remember, a cab driver charged me too much money one day. And Rob said, we can't charge profit. 
that kind of money. Brother, we always take care of you. And he just insists, well, that's what it is. But when I picked him up the ground, he changed his mind. <laughs> right. <laughs> Bam. I mean, before I could think, I just saw a fist fly by my face. And so, dude, you don't charge the brother that kind of money. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, he was like, just the coolest cat. We, we traveled all over Ghana, made a lot of friends, did a lot of business created the largest African-American business in the central region, if not in Ghana itself, called Osana Lodge. Um, it's, you know, we working out some things I'll be working out with the family because many people didn't know I gave him a portion of my share, you know. Mm. So, um, but we'll talk about that later. As yeah, the family, yeah. Home. But he was just one of those brothers who never asked for help but would help anybody that asked him, you know, you had to ask him if he needed anything. And even then he would be reluctant to say, yo, I need this or that. Um, kindness to everybody. Move between Brooklyn and Manhattan, 125th Street and, you know, Brooklyn, where he carried on his business and some of the finest t-shirts, hats, sweatshirts, um, books, tapes, you name it for decades. Um, he's one of the creators of the Happy Project. Matter of fact, he's the one that came up with the economic aspect of this uh, to Taki, him and brother Taki and myself was working on, what's the other piece, Nova? Um, Which one? The, um, Comedic Science of Prosperity. Comedic Science of Prosperity. That's mm -hmm. what evolved into Happy. Mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't know that. It's Comedic Science of Prosperity is where it started in my basement with him and Taki coming like at one o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, saying, would you do this read, you know, read this piece for us, we're doing an advertising. And um, they created the concept called Happy, mm -hmm. which is about black economics. How do we use our money wisely? How do we build a black community? And Rock was always there. He was always trying to figure out how to develop black economics, how to get the black community to spend that trillion plus dollars in the black community, with black people, deposit your money in black banks, you know, when you can, you know, we don't have a lot of them. So when you, he was the economic man, you know, he pioneered a lot of ideas and bitcoins and other things in our community, trying to find out how to get that to work for us. He has two sons, um, beautiful young boys, Kofi and Manny. Um, and what we're here to do tonight is let the world know we want them to do something to assist Kofi and to assist Manny. They lost their father. Kofi just started college this year, you know, and is doing very well. Beautiful young brother, you know. Um, this giant that moved with Dr. Leonard Jeffries, he was with Dr. Ben, Dr. Clark, he was a part of the First World Alliance, he was part of the slave theater which many of the young people don't know. You know, he was a fixture, him and brother say who, you know, in giving out the tapes and other things at First World in multiple locations. So he, he isn't somebody new to the movement. You know, Rock's been out there since he was a youngster. I met him like, uh, must have been at City College. He was going to Hunter College at the time. Um, it must have been like 27 years ago. Mm -hmm. you know? nice. And we've been partners ever since. So anything we can do to help his family, you know, help them two boys, make sure we give him the appropriate going home ceremony. We want to ask the community to assist us in doing that and to appreciate a beautiful spirit. I mean, everybody on the continent of Africa love this dude. I used to feel kind of envious. I go, hey, I've been coming here for years, y'all. Like, yo, pro for supplement. Where's Rock? Where's Rock? The kids <laughs> come, no, serious. We riding down the street. The kids running alongside the car. Hey, Rock. Hey, Rock. <laughs> like the word got out. Rock's in town. Rock is here. And it was like that. People just loved him. King, the kings loved him. Yes. I mean, loved him. It was like he was royalty. And they felt it. Yeah. You know? So he was just a beautiful son to me, a beautiful friend, a beautiful student. He introduced me to um, what's the, uh, Tariq Nasheed and Hidden Colors. 
to them one day. He said, man, look at this tape. See what this dude is talking about. I said, oh, man, I'm rock. I see some mistakes in here. Let's get in touch with this dude. Next thing you know, me and him, we're in Los Angeles with Tariq Nasheed. So we brought down the criticism. Rashid and said, yo, really think there's some problem? I'm going to send you a ticket. I said, well, I don't move with that rock. He said, I'll send you two tickets. Mm. You know? mm. um, Excellent. He's Let's... drove me from my brother's house. Now we driving, right, from Los Angeles mm -hmm. to Weed, California, near the Oregon border. 13 hours. You know, one day we rolling. Um, so he, he, you know, he was a comrade, a friend, Indeed. a revolutionary thinker, an activist in the community, one of the kindest persons you want to know, as long as you didn't cross him. Oh. Otherwise, you're gonna taste the ass walk, you know. Mm -hmm. but, um, you know, he loved his people. He loved the culture. He loved and understood the economics. Matter of fact, Rich, he introduced us. Mm. You know, you know, I don't. I don't remember. I don't remember. You know, the first time we came to to your spot with a sister who was doing the um, right, 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 Wall Street right. piece. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 Wow. Right. wow. You're absolutely right, my brother. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. Rest in power to rock. I'm gonna give uh the information if uh the family's interested in assisting when the room gets a little more full. Right. Uh, the room ain't you know, y'all just loading in right now, so probably toward the middle of the show, I'll let y'all know about this brother and how y'all could help out uh with this brother and you know everything else. It's all tying into today's show. We're having an amazing show today. You know, one of the biggest ways, today's show is magnificent. I'm going to tell you all two reasons why the show is so great tonight. First of all, Def is the most talked about but least understood subjects in humanity. Def is the main one of the main ingredients they use to lock us down and to have us, we scared like a mug of Def. They just yeah. tell us, Yo, they, they could get us to do anything. Drink some horse piss. As long as, long as we don't die, we'll do anything. We'll do it. Yeah. We'll do it. So the ancients, they didn't really think the same way we think because they had a different perspective and understanding of death. So they understand that, oh, if I could teach them to be scared of death. I could control them. I got a brother from the continent, yeah. Nova Felder. Uh, tell them where you're from, Nova. So my, my mom is from Kenya. Um, mm -hmm. my dad is from South Carolina. He's a South mm -hmm. Carolina Felder, uh, with Gullah Geechee, Geechee, Gullah yeah. Geechee's, uh, hail from the Senegambia, um, region, uh, Burkina regions of, uh, West Africa. So mm -hmm. in essence, I'm kind of like West and East Africa Dope. and, um, and stooled in, uh, the Akan tradition in Ghana, which is in present day Ghana and, uh, Professor Small, is one of uh you know he's a he's a stool man as we say as well he's my elder in the tradition so um yeah that's the perspective i bring in as you say brother rich and uh to let the family know me and rich have known each other nearly 20 years before yeah. i had any grades i don't see any grades on rich yet but um <laughs> never we, had we, and um he knows brother rock from the work that me and rock did on 125th mm -hmm. street for 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 over a decade together as uh brothers and comrades waking the people up but uh, as an african person he a melanated person um talking about this subject as you know as rock was there to me um uh, we're giving his 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 death meaning in life after his his physical transition and in a contradiction which is very closely related and evolved out of the Kemetic tradition in uh, uh, Northeast Africa, what we call Egypt, which we call Kemet. Um, the Akan tradition, we see life as a continuum. Um, we necessarily do not have deities that we pour libation to. We are always intertwined and intertangled with our ancestors. They are part of our family. Um, uh, many of us, as you see, Professor Smalls behind him has uh, Nana Omawali, uh, AKA Malcolm X, right? They can see it. So they are. He, he, why Malcolm did you X say Nana? Nana Al, why did you say Nana Akulali, AKA Malcolm oh, X? Omawali? Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. that was uh, Malcolm's uh, West African name. And mm -hmm. Nana is a title of, of respect, it's a title of leadership. And he was definitely our leadership leader. Nana is king. Mm -hmm. So um, we would give him that respect, but he's on uh, that there may not necessarily be Professor Shrine, but 
he, Nana Omawali, Malcolm X, is part of Professor James Small's family, especially if you know the history of those two. So in my home, I also have my dad, I have my, my aunties, my grandmothers, everybody. They all, even though they've transitioned physically, um, they're part of our family spiritually and also part of us in our minds because they influenced mm -hmm. us. Uh, you remember my dad, Dr. Jack Felder? Yes, sir. Um, every day, I mean, people are telling me more and more as I'm getting more mature, I wouldn't say older, but more mature, you look just like Jack, man. You look like, like your dad. You, you, you do. Just you like do. You because do. he is physically part of me, right? And he helped create me and educate me and bring me to this point in time. So um, as you say, being from the continent and understanding that um, energy that we don't die. We continue on our journey. We, our physical parts might go back to the earth. Our energy continues. It might come back as Professor always teaches us, but we keep moving. And um, I think that's why when you looked at the ancients, Brother Rich, you saw how they moved. They behaved different. They thought different. They acted different. They prepared more in Kemet. They prepared more for their death than their life. For their life. <laughs> yo, hey, yo, that was yeah. ain't that some shit? Nova, yeah. Yeah. Professor yeah, James Paul, yeah, talk, talk to, talk. talk to let's yeah. start with that. That's I was gonna go. Let's start. How you prepare more for your death than your life? So called yeah. death, brother. Talk. Let's start yeah. with that. And, and let me let me give you some context real quick. I'm sorry, Professor yeah. Small. Mm -hmm. I had a conversation with Professor Small before the show, and Professor Small was like, "Rich, I've been a priest since I was 20, 20 years old, right?" 21. 21. So I just want to put that out there. This brother's been doing this and he's been involved in this level of information for a long time. Go ahead, my brother. Yeah. So people can understand the context. When Malcolm X gets assassinated, I'm the guy that takes over his mosque. Mm -hmm. I became the imam. Who you? Al Hajj Amin Shahid, one of the most powerful imams in this country mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. But then I realized Islam after a few years was not, 11 years I served in that post. Yes. But during that 11 years, I studied the Yoruba tradition on the Mama KK and Baba Sergeman before they went and built the village in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And when they needed a space because they lost their space on 7th Avenue, I let them meet in my mosque on 139th Street wow. on Sundays. Mm. Because that evoked the wrath of some of the other Muslim brothers who tried to do a little coup de on the brother, but that didn't work, mm. Mm. you know? And so this tradition, I've been a, a chief in the Akan tradition since 1984. I'm Nana Pansa, the second of the Agogo stool of the Ashanti nation. So um, I come with a background in the tradition, and I actually taught religion at City College in the Black Studies Department for 18 years, comparative religion, including all African systems. I studied the Voodoo tradition for some 15 years under Rulox Maryland, who was my Hogun, and under Alexandre Samdi. So I, I've been in the tradition a long time and also initiated in the Ga tradition, where I'm near Hito Okropon. That's the tradition of the people who live in the Accra section of Ghana and other places in West Africa. So I, I just did that as I kind of let people know I do have a little bit of background. <laughs> but I want to like read for a few minutes, if you would indulge it, from a book by a young brother from Nigeria. It's called The Rebirthing of African Consciousness. Mm. It's a bad book. The Rebirthing of African Consciousness. And you could get it online because one brother just called me and said he found the book. It's $25. But when I started reading this book last week, I go, wow, because somebody sent it to me through the mail. I didn't even know the brother. And he had somebody mailed it to me. And it just he has this extraordinary chapter on death and reincarnation, being consistent, writing it consistent to African traditions from Kemet, I like to say from the Niger, to the Senegal, to the Nile, mm -hmm. or to Kemet, or the Happy. So just listen to what our ancestors mm -hmm. had to say. And he, he's recounting, he said, recently a friend of mine came to my house. We got to talking and he asked, since you don't believe the human body turns to dust at death, what happens to it? And he smiled. He said, at this question, 
he got up and went to the freezer. Fortunately for me, there was this large chunk of ice in the freezer. I brought it out and after some time, it returned to its liquid form. I asked him to accompany me to the kitchen. There, I poured the water in the kettle and switched on the gas. After about 10 minutes of boiling, there was no water left in the bottle. I looked at my friend and asked, where is the water? And then he, go, he said, it's gone. Mm. It has evaporated. I told him that is what happens in the human body at death. Whether in liquid, solid, or gaseous state, energy remains a part of the universe. Man, an energy being, man is condensed energy. Mm. That is what the Einstein famous E equals MC square theory of laws of general relativity and quantum mechanics is all about. And check out Einstein's background and you'll see how interested he was in traditional African religions. It states that all matter is energy condensed to a slow vibration. Nikol Tulsa said, if you want, or Tesla, I'm sorry, if you want to find the secret of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. Mm. That brings us back to the drum, but somewhere before we over, we'll talk about that for a minute. So I said, what did the first law of thermodynamics say? That the total amount of energy in the universe is constant or zero, which means all that we see is an expression of one energy spirit. Energy cannot be destroyed, neither is it created. It only changes form and has three states, the liquid, the solid, and the gases. When we die, we don't in any way turn to dust. The body simply evaporates. Now, most people have heard me say over and over that each one of us is an expression of an aspect of the divine essence having a human experience, the same thing Tesla came up with. And that is African religion and tradition. Remember, Tesla did a lot of his work in South Africa. You know, people learn our stuff. I never knew that. I never knew that. Culture, you know, and then send it back to us in another package. Let me read a, a little bit more because what this it's only two pages, but it's so fascinating that this brother got it so right. He said, if you put a dead organism, human or animal, in a glass coffin or container and seal it, after some days, you will notice the body will begin to decay. Maggots will feed on the body. At the end of the, the decaying process, what will be left are the bones, skeleton, not a heap of sand or dust. Even the maggots will simply disappear. To understand better what I'm saying, do your own research. Put a dead rat or cat in a bottle and close it and watch what happens after some days. The body will not in any way turn to dust. After decaying, and let me give you a thing. People say, well, what about the pharaohs? They, 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 they saved them, yeah, because they came up with a concept, not in Kemet. This concept came from West Africa and moved to Kemet. The oldest mummified body in the world was found in the Sahara among the, the Gudamas people, near what is now Mauritania and, and Mali. And, 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 and what they did, because they still do mummification of the kings and the chiefs and the queens in West Africa. And they, they submerge the body in salt and suck all the moisture out. So the bacteria that produces the maggots have nothing to eat on. They can't live in that environment. And that's how you preserve the body. You've got to remove all of the moisture. So the bacteria have nothing to feed on and you can preserve that body. So that's how they do the mummification. A little bit more to it than that, but that's the general idea. After decaying, what will be left of the skeletons? And how the maggots leave the bottle shouldn't be a mystery. Energy is spirit. It's simply transformed from one state to another. We know that the atoms, the smallest particles in the universe, which everything is made of, including us humans, 
is 99.9999999 empty space. The atoms at the building are the building blocks of all matter consisting of three atomic particles, mm -hmm. which are the protons, the neutrons, and the electrons. And I've been telling people for years, but they haven't been listening. Western science is African spirituality stolen. And they got us out here dealing in what I call spookality while they're dealing in our reality. Spirituality should be your scientific reality, your mastering of cosmology and ecology and your relationship to it. I'm going to read the rest of this page and I think people will get it and then we can just discuss the heck out of this, right? And so studies have shown that the neutrons and protons found in the nucleus of the atom, while the electrons are found in the energy level around the, the nucleus. The atom consists of six electrons, six neutrons, and six protons, six, 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 the atoms, as the building block of all matter, are the source of our physical expression. They are the mark of material reality. We wouldn't have had bodies or be able to live on this three dimensional state and transact in material life without them. Our bodies are at our atom 666 encoded. Everybody know about 666, but they just be playing with it. Since everything in the material universe is made of atoms, and since there is only one consciousness, now listen to that, there's only one consciousness or spirit expressing itself subjectively as stated by the laws of thermodynamics. And since energy can neither be created or destroyed, but only change form, can we in all honesty say there is no such thing as death? When death on one form of energy is life as another form of energy. It is in the knowledge of the transformation and the transmutation of energy that our ancestor came up with the concept of reincarnation, for energy is constantly reincarnating itself. African spirituality teaches us that death does not really exist, but movement of energy does. We are on an electrical field. No single form of energy lives lasts forever, for energy can't be uh, static, I meaning it can't stay as one thing in one place. Our existence in each form of dimension of vibration is just for a while. We must move on back to the source, infinite energy, or what we call God, to say, have to, to have a clear understanding of the teaching of African spirituality about death. We must find understanding. We must first understand the nature of the universe. So I won't go any farther with that. I think that said enough for us to be discussing for a week. And I've been teaching that for years. That if God is omnipotent, omnipresent, omnipotent, and supreme, there's no room for anything else to exist but it. So what are we? We are an expression of an aspect of it. And what is that? That is an eternal uh, reincarnating energy. We are made up of water. We are made up of energy or fire. And we're made up of mineral or earth. Those are the three things. And it keeps transforming itself. In the Yoruba tradition, they explain it in a very short story, the story of Oya. Mm -hmm. And I'm a priest of Oya. And Oya and Shango and Ogun. Everybody know, oh yeah, I want to be Ogun because Ogun is the god of water, god of mm -hmm. iron. That's the metaphor. Mm -hmm. Shango is the king, he's the Alapa, and I want to be like the Alapa, and he got power, that's the metaphor. We're talking about scientific concepts. Oya's the wind, yes. She blows things away, yes. But Oya, that's a metaphor. It's a story about change and transformation and reincarnation. And so in the story, in the Yoruba story, which is a very short one, um, Shango is symbolic of any man who gets power and he becomes arrogant and egotistical and mean-spirited. And so he gets his two brothers to fight to the death 
saying, whichever one wins, I will give you this wealth and this power, blah, blah, blah. At the end, one of the brother kills the other, and then he suddenly realized, as with his power of the king, he is responsible for the murder of his brother. And he sees his negative imprint on this situation. So he runs to the forest and he goes to the tree and he hangs himself. He says, oh, bakoso, oh, bakoso. The king is not dead. The king is not dead. Because what died is the negative aspect of the king. You know, the negative aspect of the king. Because what comes on the scene is Oya and cuts him down. Right? She's a woman. She, her symbol is the wind. The wind represents change from one state of energy to the next state of energy. And then Oya marries him. But then she also marries Ogun. Ogun represents transformation as a result of change from one element to the other. Then you get transformed to the other element of energy. And so, and, and the reason you use Ogun the guy who makes iron, because you got to get a, this is symbolic. You take a stone, you put it in fire and you beat out the impurities and you come up with this hard metal called steel. And you can use it to make weapons. You can use it to make tools as a symbol of explaining how we transform from one form of energy to another form of energy to another form of energy. And we are nothing more than an expression of an aspect of the totality of existence. Now, the Ewe people of Togo and Ghana, they call this Sogbe Lisa. Sogbe Lisa. And what does that mean? The totality of creation itself as the divine. So when we understand at least these basic, I know that's a little bit more than basic, you know, then we understand rock didn't go anywhere. Rock transformed. Yes. yes. Excellent. And Professor. Professor, do you um I don't I don't know if it's appropriate. Would you like to share um the experience that you had the Thursday before we uh found Rot right oh, now? Right. Yeah, no, I think you know, first it you know it baffled me and it hit me. And and I've been in this position a long time. And I've had three spiritual deaths, physical death. I mean I've you, you had what? Say that again. You had what? Three physical deaths. You had how how okay, go ahead, go ahead. I mean, like I died. Boom, shoot, gone. How you I'll did I, mean, okay, I yeah. can't explain all of them because I'm not supposed to explain all of them, but I had three of them. Okay, when I was going through an initiation in the, in in the forest in the jungles in Trinidad with my Baba Omatushu from Nigeria, I was being raised to a certain level of the priesthood at my shrine, Kenny Cyrus Ile Ajube, in Shiguana's mm -hmm. Enterprise Village, and on my third day on the ground. I mean, like you, you're going through a lot of rituals and you're dealing with a lot of the deities. And so um, I had eaten the night before chicken with Ogun. I served Ogun the chicken and Ogun demanded that I eat the chicken. Eat. Raw chicken never tastes so good. You don't even know you eating raw chicken. Oh know. my God. Oh, mm. shit. And, but, <laughs> oh shit. No, I'm on the serious, right? I mean, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm Talk going to through me. the ritual and on the third Talk day, I remember the first day I, I was going to quit. It was too hard after 24 hours. And my friend, um, Mac McCoy, came. And from his home, 27 miles away, he said he could hear me crying. And I was going to give up. And he told me, he said, Brother Small said, don't give up. And he told me this thing that always lived with me. You are not your body. Mm. He said, you are not your body. Mm. Forget about the pain you're feeling. And don't give up. Mm. And remember shortly after he left, I could I, I was blindfolded for all those days, so I couldn't see anybody. Mm -hmm. and, and drums are playing 24 hours, hopefully. And different deities would come in and dance with me. And then one day I just woke up in a big place like a stadium, right? And it's full of ancestors mm. from every African nation, every native nation. Right. And they told me, make your report. And I'm going, like, what report? <laughs> I didn't know. What, and I, all of I had papers in front of me and I'm making a report. And they told me to go back when I got finished with the report. They said, go back and tell our people we will win, mm. not to worry. We will win. And I remember coming back and the priest would wake me. And on each of these dream journeys I would go on, they would 
write notes. Now, there's some things I can't tell you, but I could tell you this much. They would take the records of what my dreams were so we could later study them. But at some point, a spirit came in. It was, oh, yeah, took me. I'm dancing, dancing, dancing. I hit my shin on the bench. Oh, yeah, they, they took me down. And I realized I, I was gone. They didn't tell me until later. I was gone for 25 minutes. You're not supposed to come back with any brain after 25 minutes. They're dead. Right. And they were so afraid that this American professor had come down there and died in their shrine. But I came back. And I remember who brought me back. It was Baba Luaye, Shakpana, which is the deity that deals with smallpox and illness and sicknesses and so forth. And I, I, I would tell you the whole scene, but you don't have to know. The next time it happens, I'm in Mecca. That's where it started. I'm in Mecca and Saudi Arabia doing my pilgrimage. I had to go through a lot. By the time I made it back home, they weren't going to let me make it back. Me and the Arabs had an issue. They said they were going to let me die there. They had turned me over to the CIA. I escaped the American CIA. I got away from them. They caught me three weeks later. But I was so sick with malaria by then. But I'm sitting on the curb. I take off the white clothing. I'm sitting on the curb in my jeans, a dashiki, and some sneakers, because that's all I could relate to. I wanted that dashiki so I could feel Africa. And I thought I would die there. I would see thousands of people die every morning at the Kaaba. And they would carry them around the Kaaba on the board. So I was just waiting for my morning. And the one thing I wanted with my family ever get my body, would they ever know? And I'm on this curb, I'm crying in Jiddah. And a man walks up to me. And he's not a Muslim. He's not an Arab. He's in full Yoruba. Mm. I don't even know to this day if that man is real. Mm. That's real. Yeah. That's real. You're saying that. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. He said, how can I help you in Yoruba? And I said, sir, I speak only a little Arab and some English. He said, I speak English. And that man got me out of Saudi Arabia. And I never hey. seen or heard from him again. Whoa. And when I get to Ella's house, that's Malcolm X's mm -hmm. sister, sister in mm -hmm. Boston, I died on the floor of her kitchen. The doctor pronounced me dead. I'm sitting in my brain screaming, I'm not dead. Ella is crying, my daughter is crying, brother Albert is crying. Mm -hmm. And then I had a conversation with a force, if you want to put it like that. I can't tell you what the conversation was about. I made an agreement and I've kept that agreement to this day and they brought me back. I heard an explosion in my head and everybody ran to me and says, he's not dead, but I was. And I saw something that's great, greater than us. At first I saw me in my three dimensions. Didn't understand it until later. And the last time it happened, I was in Kemet. Mm. You know, this was in 87. Mm -hmm. We took a thousand people Conference. there. Mm -hmm. um, with the ASCAD group for a conference, mm -hmm. same kind of thing that jumped off with the happy thing jumped off back then. Mm -hmm. Me and Comrade World was arrested by the Egyptian Central Intelligence and FBI people. Mm -hmm. So they said I got on their military base, their secret military base in the middle of the night. I did get on the base, but I didn't get on there illegally because I'm a little Hajj Amin Shahid and I had my papers and I had my passport and I had my stamp. And so the people was very nice to me. The government had seized three containers of our goods and I went and got it back, loaded on a truck at two in the morning and drove it, blew it down to Aswan. I walked down to Aswan, a guy stopped me and said, you Professor Small? I said, no, I'm at Haji Min. He pulls out a photograph of me and said, you're under arrest, you're Professor Small. So after going through all of that ordeal and going through a thing with the Nubian Liberation Front that took me up in a car and took me up in the hills, which is another story, I passed out in the streets of, of Aswan and went into another space. And thanks, it was thanks to Brother Reggie and the Sons of Africa that they saved my life. So brought me back to this world. Because the place mm. I went was I melted into light. Mm. And my whole body didn't melt. My wife and my daughter was holding onto one hand through a hole. The rest of me was melting into this beautiful blue ooh, light. Ooh, ooh, this is a deep story. Yeah. Shit. And so, those are the three occasions yeah. with more to go with it. Your body was melting into light? My body melted wow. into light. But you had a hand left 
and yeah, your family my and my holding you. Holding on to it. Yeah. Like, oh. This is in 87, right, Professor? At yeah. the ASCAT yeah. conference in Egypt. Yeah. Dr. Ben yeah. was there, Dr. Clark, Ace oh, Henry, Clark. everybody. Dr. I mean, J. They were, they were crying over me. Dr. Ben yeah. was crying. Dr. Jeffrey wow. was crying. Sir James mm -hmm. can't die. He can't. Gil Noble was there crying. Yeah. Sister Keppel was there. Uh, Dr. Ben. This wife. is when you had locks, right? Yeah. yeah. So that, that was a. So, so I've had an experience. You, you know, you have other experience. When you go into the spiritual world, if you want it, they'll give you what you've come looking for. Mm. But you better want it. Mm. You understand? You better want it. You go open that door and you're ready. You won't come back out there. Now, 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 Professor, the so that's that's three experiences. But now, uh, roughly two weeks ago, you had an experience right. while you were and sitting. Comes the rock, right? Yes. So me and my wife had just come in. It's Thursday night. And um, we're sitting in the chair in the living room, come in from Brooklyn. I drive to Brooklyn, pick her up, bring her back home. And she's in her chair taking a little nap. I'm in the chair taking a little nap from the exhaustion of driving. And I wake up and I realize my wife is still asleep. The TV is on. And then I didn't realize it was rock. Uh, a man made of stone like um marble mm -hmm. had on a red uh wrap from the bottom down was standing in front of my wife's chair and he moved over in front of my chair and disappeared and i go like oh shit <laughs> and it wakes my wife but i wouldn't tell her because i thought it was me and her had been having a little argument about something so my thing was well, evil spirit had jumped me because it was horrible <laughs> right and the man had a chiseled face and muscular and mm. so forth. So I don't know what to do with this. I'd never seen an anomaly like that. And I had an aunt that just passed whose funeral we had today. So I went over the next day to my cousin Sheila's house. And I tell Sheila and the other ladies in the family about it. I said, but I ain't mentioned it to Carol. I don't know how to mention it because I never, nothing like this ever happened to me before. This man just looked, stood in front of her and just slide over in front of me and he just disappeared. And he was made out of marble. and it's, Face, I call the face chisel, you know, muscular and, and the body. And he had on this red. But because I was into a negative state, mm. I didn't see the spiritual reality. Red in the African tradition, especially West African tradition, is ancestral transition, right? Stone, marble, that's rock. Yeah, we don't know yeah. rock is gone yet. It wasn't until Sunday morning, I get a call from Brother Brian. Hey, Brother Small, have you heard from Brother Rock? I said, no. Mm -hmm. But I got very concerned because it's 7 o'clock in the morning. I said, Brian, call me at 7 o'clock in the morning. Something must not be right. So I started calling Rock on all the lines I had, get no answer, text and get no answer. Call his family. Call Nova. Call his children's mom, his son's mom, and tell them about the call and the fact that I can't reach him either. Nova goes over to the house, goes to the floor, knocks on the door, don't get no answer, but talk to all of the neighbors. Long story short, the next day we made a decision, let's go in on a wellness with the police. And we found the brother had transitioned mm -hmm. a few days earlier. Mm -hmm. So I can only see that my son, my brother came to me and says, come and find me so I can finish my journey. Because when I saw the picture that Nova sent me that the brothers put around a tree of him, it was the man. That was in my living room on Thursday night. Mm -hmm. I mean, to the twin, it was rock. Mm -hmm. But because it was of white stone, I didn't think of it as a, a real person. The man was stone. But then Nova says, Brother Small, rock the stone. And then it hit me. Mm -hmm. Rock and red say I've already transitioned. And, and, the and explain the, the, the significance of the red kilt, the skirt that he had on. Right. When, when there's a transition in the archon tradition, mm -hmm. red is the color of that transition. People go to the funerals, they wear red and black, but mm -hmm. red is the ultimate color. The immediate family will all wear red. And, and then that, that, that symbolizes the, the, the transition from this realm to that energy realm we call the ancestral realm. Mm -hmm. Because in our tradition, we see the ancestors and as as the aspect of the divine 
that experience life before us. So they become our mm -hmm. primary teachers. Mm -hmm. You see, and so they their color is red. And if you go back, take it backwards, my father and my mother, when they gave birth to me, they gave birth to themselves, but they didn't die even while they were still living. They had already recreated themselves. They recreated an institution in which their energy would live on. And so that's why we need to learn how to repair our ancestors and prepare shrines so we can constantly recall the body of knowledge they represent in our minds through them mm -hmm. talking to us and teaching us through the years and in our gene when they're transferred to us when we were given birth to. And if you take that cycle backwards, you end up to God as being the beginning ancestor, ancestor. of all of us. That's African culture. That's why we can't die because we are God having a human experience, period. Period. You're, mute. you're muted. You're muted. What you just said resonated with everybody listening, uh, Professor. Yes. I really want to thank you for saying what you just said just now. And the stories you just told definitely hit home. Definitely hit home. Uh, it scares so you when you're young and you don't fully understand it no, now. No. It's not all cool now, right? I wasn't cool back then. Brother right? Rich. Brother yeah, I, yes, sir. Can yes, I sir. ask? I want to ask Professor Small yes, sir. something. Go ahead, sir. Um, so, Professor, when when... I went through my uh, initiation um, to become Nana in Eastern region in, a, in the uh, Akwemu house, right? Um, you know, I, I'm like just thrown into the fire in many aspects, right? <laughs> I didn't have the, the preparation. I've kind of been uh, self-guided and I've been told that I've, I've always constantly spiritually made correct decisions throughout my life. So um, the day of my instulin, which was uh, September 9th, 2019, um, beforehand, I had to buy my, my black cloth. And um, they sat me in the dark room and told me just, you know, meditate, get ready. And um, they brought me into the uh, shrine house, into the palace, to the shrine house. And, um, and, and, and the significance, I'm just asking, the black, then you know we had to sacrifice the uh, ram, uh, the white male goat, um, and, well, and I had I'll, to wear that I'll black. I'll set you down because sometime. some of this, yes, we're not to interpret to the public. Yes. Okay. Um, there's some the things that happened to you, and to me. I was initially a stool in 1984 mm -hmm. and reconfirmed to the stool in 1992. Mm -hmm. um, but some of this the is symbolism, not, not the death, the black and the red, yeah. and all of those things I had to do. That's what yeah. I mean. I want you to explain. No, I'm not going to. I'm okay. telling you. Some of hey, this you know, perfect. based on that, you know, I'm glad Nova asked that because mm -hmm. one of the questions that popped into my head when you was telling your story is that ah, uh, something that my spirit continues to tell me for the last ten years. Mm -hmm. Is that now? I'm not part of a traditional system or nothing like that. I'm I'm reading. I'm listening to people. No, you are. I'm, you just don't know that you, you don't are. know it. Right? No, 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 no. Definitely, definitely, definitely. But check this out, Professor, because I know I, I I'm I'm going to appreciate your answer. My spirit constantly tells me. Sometimes when I come up with these profound ideas or this or that, this, the first thing I say is, "Oh shit, I got to tell so and so." My spirit say, "No, no, 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 nigga, this is just for you." Yeah. And I, my ego don't understand it. My ego wants to tell somebody. My ego wants to tell my girl. My ego wants to tell somebody that I know. My spirit's like, no, it's not even meant for your mama, nigga. It's meant for you. So it's confusing. I'm talking like that to generate an emotion. But right. it's confusing for a person like, wait, but I can't tell my mama, my son, my girl, my woman. And, and the spirit's like, no, nigga, it's for you. And then when you tell somebody, it weakens you. It weakens you, professor. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, damn, maybe. I guess you was right. And that happened to me again and again till the time I'm like, I can't tell nobody. This you, is just for me. To accept, Talk to you me. have to accept your relationship with ancestral divinity. Mm -hmm. Accept it. Yes. That something is instructing you beyond the, your perception of what mm. is matter and what is not matter. Not matter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. The one thing I can say about that space that Brother Rich went into right that in that space not brother rich that brother 
um, Nova went into in that shrine. He went there to assume the spirit of an ancestor mm -hmm. of that community that had adopted him and presenting him for stew. That's why when you come out of that tradition, that ceremony, you have a different name because you have the name of the spirit that has lit upon you. He may have been physically dead for hundreds of years, but his spirit lives in that special place that was designed for that purpose. And it will light upon you, mm -hmm. you see. But there's some of this that is not for the public. There's mm -hmm. some we can tell our people. That but you have to open the door to African culture for yourself and not be afraid to return home to your ancestors' way of knowing reality. And that's scary because the, as Rich was saying, that made us afraid of death. Yes. Um, and in our culture, we don't believe in death. Mm -mm. They made up afraid of even seeing even one of my babies um, call the other day and was saying, Daddy, um, I want to learn more about the voodoo, but should I be afraid? As mm. are you afraid of me? I am mm. voodoo. Mm. You know I am voodoo. Yes. You are voodoo. We all voodoo. Mm. Voodoo is an mm. airway word and a fond word. It means the essence of the divine, the essence of the universe and the nature in you. Mm. Get it right now. Mm -hmm. Voodoo. Voodoo. Mm -hmm. Talk to me. Talk to me. Essence of the mm -hmm. universe and nature in the human. Mm -hmm. so you know, it's, it's, so it's you funny, the, Professor. The word you would do to the voodoo godsy, mm -hmm. in the essence of the universe, the totality in humans. Mm -hmm. Voodoo daha, mm -hmm. in the essence of the universe in nature. nature. Mm -hmm. And so when we come back home to our culture, mm -hmm. Even when you're afraid, because I've been down on my knees in Orange County, California, in the hands of the craziest white policemen in the world with the pistol up to my head saying, and sign this confession that you had, mm. a million dollars worth of heroin and two stolen guns out of the Oakland Armory. And I go like, mm-mm. The only reason I'm alive, because I ain't signed not no confessing. <laughs> if I do yoga, I'll take a brother right out of here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, So people have to understand those of us who grew up in the struggle, the physical mm. struggle of the sixties, it was real. And if you didn't find that space with the ancestor of the divine, mm. it was rough out there. You understand? Mm. I know Asada Shakur. I knew Zay Shakur. Mm. I know Tupac Shakur. I knew Lumumba Shakur. I knew Afini Shakur. They were my peoples. I got married, me and my wife in the next bedroom. Tupac's mother and father got married in that same bedroom. You know, we all came out of Malcolm's thing. People don't know that a lot of the Black Panther leadership was in the OAAU mm -hmm. before Malcolm was killed. And the Youth Brigade, or the revolutionary arm of the, of the movement, Rams, under Max Stanton, Muhammad Ahmed, who's still alive, one of the senior brothers. That, so we had to fine spirit mm. to survive the threat. And we found spirit. It was always there. Someone just had us looking in the wrong direction. Mm. It was in our grandparents in South Carolina, Mississippi, Arkansas, Georgia. All right. It was in our black folks trying to struggle to Harlem with the mafia trying to control everything in Detroit and Chicago. They had mm. some white folks start calling it soul. Hmm. Okay. That's what, yeah. okay. To diffuse what it really was and then tie it only to music and food. Well, no, that, what what was it really? You said to it confuse. Is the, it is the ancestral spirit that was bonding us together. Mm. Mm. Excellent. So, so we never lost Africa, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Somebody just tampered with our memory and using fear, as Rich said, when we were opening up as the primary tool and tampering with your memory of your ancestral pathway back to the creating force itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, um, you know, something that a lot of people I've interviewed, I've been interviewing people for over, uh, for over 15 years, mm -hmm. 
And so I've heard a lot of stories and just through life experience. One thing a lot of people say is that, yo, one day somebody I never knew came up to me and told me this or said that or did this or did that. And I never seen this person again. Mm -hmm. Yo, Professor Small, is that like a ghost, an ancestor showing itself in a different Everybody got this story of somebody they never met before who changed their life and they never seen that person again. Right. There yeah. got to be some spiritual Remember, stuff even going Malcolm on. Malcolm X saw that person while yes. he was in prison. Yes, yes. exactly. Yeah, exactly. Story. Okay. There's because got to be some, bro. That, Come on, that, man. That is that energy of the divine. Yes. Talk that to takes me. on the matter form of energy uh -huh. in order to communicate with you. So Once they're not you even human. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. Well, human ain't nothing but a form of God. Okay. Mm. Let me break that down real quick. Ooh. 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 That's it. There you go. There you okay. go. Human ain't nothing but a form there of God. God. There you go. There you go. The thing is, <laughs> become con to become conscious of it. Yeah. yeah. When you become conscious of the divine. Mm -hmm. One second. Mm -hmm. Naja? Uh-huh. You're looking for something? Uh, no, I was making sure the decision I had. Okay, okay. Sorry about that. I live in a family, bro. My children make It's all things. good. It's all good, brother. Go ahead. Go ahead, Professor. Yeah. See, when you become wow. conscious of the fact that you are God having a human experience, your whole world going to change. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Your whole world going to change. Mm -hmm. And then you learn to love Africa. Love that barefooted, dusty, dirty, ashy leg, old man, old woman, Walking down a road in a village that's got no pavement, red mud, and the rainstorm, you almost have to swim across the road. Yeah. Going into a, a, a clay pot home that's so thermodynamic, it's warm in the winter and cool it's cool in the, in the summer. Mm -hmm. You look at it and say, oh, beat up huts. You don't see the science of it. Um, going to his field with his cutlass in his hand. Mm -hmm. Walking three miles, you look at the woods. You go like, think of that forest, and you realize that's somebody's farm, mm -hmm. because he don't kill the other living things in the farm to grow the living things he wants to grow. Wow, form of nature and humanity mm -hmm. that the white man and the Asians can't even get near. Yeah. Mm -hmm. deep, deep. That's when you know, oh, there go God just walking on the road with a cutlass in his hand. Mm. When you learn to love you again, you learn to love Africa again, you learn to love God again, you learn to love the universe again, you learn to love the reason the Dogon could see the star Sirius without going in a spaceship, because the Dogon and you and me, we are the star Sirius. Mm -hmm. We don't need a microscope or telescope. Mm -hmm. We are made up of aspects of that star. Mm. We simply need consciousness and memory. And so when you understand that and you give yourself to that, then you understand what ma'at really means. They tried to copy it in Christianity when they tell you about love and forgiveness. They're mm. trying to work ma'at, but they don't want to take all of it. They want to take pieces of it, you see? Yeah. Piecemeal. You can't have pieces of a house and have mm -hmm. a whole house. Mm -hmm. It may look like a good house because you in there with all of your sweet energy singing and shouting, but you're missing certain ingredients around ethics, mm -hmm. morals, Integrity. principles, concepts, mm -hmm. and ideas that form the universe itself. See? And then you create chaos. Mm, it's fair. You know? What our ancestors call Isfit in the Nile Valley, what we call Satan, Elijah was calling Satan here. Shaitani. Mm -hmm. And so we've got to find our way back to, and 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 Kemet they call it Maat, and Yoruba land they call it Ewapile, mm -hmm. the gentle character, mm -hmm. and 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 Igbo land they call it Omanele, mm -hmm. harmony within and harmony without. Mm -hmm. That's what you have to find. You can only find that if you return to African culture. Some Asian cultures managed to develop it within their religious temple, but very few man managed to make it their culture. In Africa, we don't have a religion. We only have a culture. 
Mm. That is the culture <clears throat> of godness itself. Mm. But that's what they've torn us away from with fear. Mm. Professor on fire tonight, Rich. Yeah, yeah. He getting a lot of love in the house, man. You Professor like a king in that house, man. Fire. You like yeah. the king in that house. Everybody there's, there's green you, man. That we can add yeah. or subtract. My children and grandchildren. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. So the, the, the thing is, is to look in the mirror. Yeah. You know, Michael Jackson, they harm that little brother extraordinarily. Mm. But even with all the harm that was done, straightening your hair, mm -hmm. having to lighten your skin in the way he ended up having to do it, it could have been because of the disease, but what they did with it is something else. Mm -hmm. um, but he would, they couldn't kill the African spirit. No, they had to murder him. No. Mm. Because when he came back after that few years of exile in the Arab world with his brothers, where they in kept Bahrain. him safe, mm -hmm. the first thing he did when he came back to says, he came up with a song that they don't care they, about, they about us. us. Mm -hmm. Wow. Open it up with a speech by Dr. King. Yes. It's oh no, we can't let him come out. Because we thought we had killed them. And all we did was let the African God grow in him mm -hmm. even more. Life from death, deep. Yeah. Look at the babies. Beautiful. Yeah. That's his, that's, that's exactly. Yeah. That's his wealth. Father. That's his wealth. No, yeah. not just that. Yeah. That's his continuation. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. That's, the, that's, that's, the, that's, that's life after death. Life that's after life death. after death. Yes. That's, they already here. That's yeah. life yeah. after death. In my you just job, had one, Rich. Keep them on the Yeah. Thank you, Nova. That's yeah. the best way to say it. That's my continuation. Yes. That's each of us, you know, that beautiful little one, Rock, mm -hmm. um, Rich, that you have, that's that's you. That's mm -hmm. you. Going mm -hmm. forward into eternity. Mm -hmm. See, if we come back to African culture, man, the whole world changes. Mm. You know, the whole world changes. You know, Nova has lived in it all of his life. So he knows it in a way that many men not. You know, I met the spirit of his mother. I was a brother to his father. I performed the opening of the mouth ceremony out of Kim and at his father's funeral. Me and Rock, Rock held the script for me while we did his father's funeral. So they go to baby, yeah, mm -hmm. look at his mm -hmm. got all grown up. But mm -hmm. that's it, see? we The white man got us thinking that's somebody different. No, that's you. When your mother and father had that beautiful experience called sex and passed that sperm to that egg, oh. they recreated themselves as you. Mm -hmm. listen to that well now they recreated themselves as you so that you are them going forward and that's what they want us to not understand See, because if you understand that then you know how to take care of this baby you know how to look for her and how to die for them mm -hmm. you know how to teach them and how to keep away from them things they don't need to know mm -hmm. and you build the God and behind me, you see over here, I got Shango, mm -hmm. I got Oya, mm -hmm. I got Malcolm. I even have Bumpy Johnson over there mm -hmm. on my shrine. Mm -hmm. They didn't say Bumpy was a criminal. Bumpy may have been a criminal to them, but Bumpy was a uh, uh, fighter for freedom to us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He made mistakes because he's fighting within the realm of what they have designed. Mm -hmm. But here's a man that loved black people so much he never moved out of home or <laughs> ran away to Staten Island, New Jersey. He lived right there on 135th Street and Lenny Avenue till he died. Walked mm. out, got his coffee every morning, and didn't worry whether these people were gonna kill him because these people love him. Mm. A story that really should be told instead of some movie showing him as some brutal mm. gangster. Mm. Mm. But that's not the real story. Indeed. Yeah. So what we've got to understand that we are the divine having the human experience. The easiest way to say it is each of us is an expression, aspect of the totality of creation, having this peculiar experience called me. Mm. When Michael sang that song, and we were talking about Michael looking at the man in the mirror, mm. listen to that song. It's Just deep. the spirit of it going to hit you. Deep. But each of us should look at the man in the mirror and get a relationship with that man in the mirror. Critique the man in the mirror. And hey, the man in the mirror. 
Hey, Professor uh, James Small, um, what do you think about the Western way of when somebody passes away, since we're talking about life after death, the whole funeral, us wearing all black and us buried, burying them in the ground. How does that compare to what you've studied, what you've researched, what you've been through in terms of all the knowledge that you have accumulated throughout your life? Is, is that the proper way to bury someone, no. my brother? No? no. Oh, my God. Don't say if that. If you were buried, the Muslims have yeah. kept the proper way. Mm -hmm. Even the Hebrews have kept the proper way by burying in a wooden box and without putting all that poison in a person called embalming. See, when you put that body in the ground, it should decay and go back to nature. The water gets evaporated out and becomes a part of, goes back up to the sky in, in the gas form and become rain again and rain down on the plant that you eat. So you then, and I've been saying this for like 30 years, if you go to some of my speeches, and you ingest the bodies of your ancestors that have now and again switched from one form of energy to another form of energy, right? And, and so when you got um, a body being put in the ground and he's in a casket made of metal and that's stuck in the ground and they put a wooden box around that and then that's stuck in the ground, they put a cement box in that, you have imprisoned that energy. Some of it has already escaped, but you still imprison some of it. It's going to take centuries for them to come and be free and become a part of nature again. Okay. If you're going to bury, then put it in a wooden box and put it in the earth. Let it decay and come back to earth, become a part of the nature that you live in. But they even have laws to lock you in that tomb to keep that African spirit from coming out. But it gets out anyway, because a part of it never went in the ground. A part of it left the body when it got to be too damaged and too injured to create the ecology to hold that particular energy field. And that's what I saw of rock in my living room that had already escaped the body and came to see me, to tell me he needed help on his journey that night, last week. Professor Smalls, um, one thing, Marcus Garvey, I don't want to quote him directly, but one of the things he mentioned is that look for me in the world win. Uh, to take that quote and to use it literally, do you ever, Professor, you're an elder in, this, in our community, when you feel a breeze, when you see the sun, when you see a fire, do you think of your ancestors when you see the, when you see these elements? Because some people may not take that literally, but are, do we literally become these elements when we move yeah, on? Like we a are wind, those, a we nice are wind. Those, we are those elements. Yeah. You know, we are water. 77% mm. of us are water. Body. Mm. Okay. We are fire. We are air. And then we are earth. That the piece that we saying, this is earth, this is energy that mm -hmm. has taken the food that you ingest, which grows out of the ground. Mm -hmm. It is well, what if I eat a cow? He ate the grass that grew out the ground. Right. All right. Mm -hmm. And took mm -hmm. that mineral from that ground and made that big body you call a cow. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so you you're eating dirt. So you are dirt. Mm -hmm. You understand? And you are water. Mm -hmm. And you are fire. But we never think of it like that because the white man has confined us to this arrogant egoism. Compartmentalize about everything. Yes. yes, compartmentalize. Yes, yeah. yes, no. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's a good word. Mm -hmm. but when you realize, if you ever go to church and a person get the grace, what we call the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. and a lot of young people don't go to church. But if you ever seen a person in church get that Holy Ghost, mm. you feel a spirit has arrived on the scene with instructions through this person mm -hmm. and that dancing and that singing straight up out of Africa. Mm -hmm. It may be an organ in place of the drum, but the rhythm is the same. The vibratory notes, you know, the poly rhythm of the body movement, all mm -hmm. right out of Africa. The call and response, response right. it's a rhythm cocoon that allows for you to express the divine among you in the same way if you go to a village in Africa and you see um, 
the ancestor masquerade dancing around the village. Mm -mm. There you go. Hey, hey. Yeah, that, that's the good piece right there. That's hold up, hold up, hold up. No, put that up. Let me uh put you. Yeah. What's that called? Flash of oh, the spirit. spirit. Mm -hmm. African. It's worth reading. It's written by a European who was Forrest Thompson. I met him. Through mm -hmm. that Asa Hilliard. He was at a conference that we put together, Asa put together years ago. Well trusted, trained by our priests, especially the Voodooists and the people in the Gullah Geechee community of the South. Mm -hmm. And he produced that piece when we weren't allowed to produce that type of document. Mm -hmm. mm. And um, and mm -hmm. please get the one I showed you yes. before. Yeah, yeah. Rebirth. African rebirth. Let me hold up, hold up, Professor. Hold up, hold up. Let me put that on there. Rebirthing, uh, rebirthing the African consciousness. Who's that by, Professor? I'm sorry. Let me... um, it's a Nigerian brother. He has a long name. Yeah, I can't even pronounce that. Y'all mm -hmm. see the name? <laughs> they, they Kamuno, Kuro, 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 Kuro. You know, but what's that name, Nova? Come on, man. You African, man. God damn, Nova. <laughs> Where come from, Baba Ayo? But he's stepping, he's, you know, the old folks said down south when you made a good dish, they said, you put your foot in that, you stepped mm. in that, brother stepped in this one. Cooking. Ooh, that that stepped explanation stepped was crazy. Now, when Rebirth. you was reading earlier, it was Rebirth. crazy. Rebirth. That was it. Yeah, yeah, no, that was crazy what he was reading was earlier. Crazy. Yeah, he stepped in it. He got his foot all up in that. And, and that kind, and this kind of writing is coming up all over the African world now. People are seeing it. Young people are saying, we ain't scared. Mm. We mm -hmm. we gonna work with this, mm -hmm. you know. When when you see the Haitian people, when they took on the French and the Spanish and the English and the Americans and defeated them during the Haitian Revolution, mm -hmm. that the, the, the revolution isn't over yet. Mm -hmm. But when they had that massive defeat, is because they turned totally back to voodoo. It was after the great victories. And the mulatto elite murdered Chinchak Dessaline and went back to Catholicism that we went back into the darkness and mm -hmm. lost the light of voodoo. Yes. Voodoo is the expression of the universe itself mm. in the mind of men and women who will remember them through their ancestral reverence. Mm. Hey, uh, we're about to get to some Q&A. Before we do, um, I, t I said early in the show, we dedicated this show to the brother Rock, mm -hmm. and it was only about 300 people in the room. Now we got 1,500 people in the mm -hmm. room, and I said I'm going to wait till more people come in the room. Uh, and this was a great brother, business partner, Dr. Smalls, friend of all of us, uh, an amazing brother in the community and My in New York brother. City. Yeah. And um, so I just want to know, how, how, if we wanted to, how can we support him? Is there, uh, what's um, the best way? Yeah, well, we have, um, we created uh, a, a, a telegram group um, called The Rock Fund mm -hmm. um, to, to, to share our stories, to share our pictures and videos of, of, of Ronell Rock Barber. Um, there's a great video that um, him and Professor did uh, on the Happy Network. Um, that we have posted there and um it really kind of uh distills um what rock meant to harlem to black people and the, the wider community in africa as well um also we have a gofundme um where we're raising uh funds to make sure as professor said earlier that his transition and in uh uh, which is really for for us because I like I said he was a man of repute um, I'll call him even Nana Kofi he was Friday born he walked with that energy and um, for me as I've said uh, we were business partners for over 10 years we, we were brothers I knew rock I first met rock rock when I was maybe like you know seven eight years old uh, professor I would be delivering books with my dad to Amon Ron Isis Right um, there, that was at the mark. Right where I still we still set up at uh, on the weekends to this day, yeah. and um, so I've known Rock for you know thirty five you know plus years, and he yeah, was he my managed he, he managed that bookstore. And yes, that, that he was the GM. Yes, so, uh, with Sister Barbara working there, and so many other people. Wesley Snipes coming through, and 
Yvonne Stickley and Khalid Muhammad. Um, that was his world. So uh, we, we, we have a GoFundMe and um, we, we ask, you know, for um, any amount out of love for somebody that, you know, has sacrificed. Um, and, you know, Brother Taki will talk about, you know, uh, the things that Rock were doing for him to make sure that his films, to make sure that that movement that evolved out of the comedic science of prosperity, that him, Professor Smalls, uh, Brother Taki, uh, uh, Brother Sutek, uh, Jack, out of, who's in mm. Atlanta now, yeah. um, they, they put that, that energy together. And um, we have to understand, you know, I see, you know, some people have issues with the words that we use, like Africa and black, but what we're dealing with, like, this is about eternity. Right, and as we said with Egypt or Kemet, uh, Tamere earlier, we prepared more for our afterlife than we did for our own life here on Earth because of the importance that we 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 saw in it, and um, mm. you know, and and we have a responsibility to the community, and I think um, because we've been so detached for so long from who we actually are, we think everything is about stocks and bonds and insurance policies. But I'll tell you this, uh, I've seen it in Kenya. Uh, people show up with food and people show up with everything to my, my grandfather's house when he transitioned. I've seen it when my godfather in Ghana passed, we came together as the, the political and spiritual leaders of that community. And we organized the community to lay my godfather to rest, it is it is the community's responsibility, just like it is our community's responsibility to free the shackles off our minds and our bodies that we've been placed under the last 500 years. So we ask you in that, you know, black African tradition to uh, uh, help us put our brother to rest the way that his family would want it to be with respect um, and with the love that he gave, he, as Professor said earlier, this man gave everything. I mean, we all can have differences, but Ronell, to know Ronell was to know love. It was to know blackness and black people, um, you know, and, and, and we just want to do the right thing and um, just come together as a, as, a, as a black African family and do what our ancestors would have wanted us to do and to do what our people still do to this day. We got to start Indeed. giving ourselves more credit. Indeed. Uh, we're more powerful. You know, uh, Rich, you know, I'm really thankful for you allowing us on to dedicate this hour or so to our brother because he gave us so much. Um, he was my big brother. He taught me business. He taught me, you know, how to, he protected me in Harlem because I'm not from Harlem. You know that, Professor. Mm. You know that, Rich. I'm yeah. from Queens and we Sometimes always think you them. need protection if you're from Queens. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> and, um, Ronell was that for me, um, and he, he he showed me how to move, and um, him and my dad were close, uh, and he assisted Professor Smalls when he did the opening of the mouth ceremony for my dad uh, several years ago when during his transition. So um, you know, it, to know rock, like I said, is to know love. It is to know respect. It is to know blackness and black people. And um, I just want to just also say that I real it took this situation to make me realize because of rock, I went to Ghana. Mm. I was so enthralled in wanting to see this hotel. You know, this is a big deal. I don't know if like, now everybody's into this go to Ghana year of return, but you know, 15, 16 years ago, that it wasn't was, the It was just me and rock. Right, mm. and, and we went, it was uh, Sister Leia was leading us. Yeah. Uh, Professor, Doc, Dr. Leonard Jeffries, Dr. Rosalind Jeffries, and rock like mm -hmm. and we on the ships we doing this we doing that rock rock took me to ladies night at uh uh, uh elmina beach resort you know mm -hmm. said you gonna get a Ghanaian girlfriend i don't care what you say what woman you got in america <laughs> right mm -hmm. that that's rock to know rocky like i said is to know love and that brother so without ronnell maybe i don't go to ghana maybe mm -hmm. i don't study the uh, a contradiction or become a nana Maybe I don't become a landowner in Ghana. Maybe I just stick to my East African side. So I want to, you know, we want to honor that brother and show him the love and what, respect that what, he deserves. What's the um? What's the GoFundMe? Like, what's the how? The how do they GoFundMe go to? GoFundMe is. Let me see. I got it right here. 
Um, I have the link, but I'll tell you what the this exact name of it is. Um, can you send me the link in the private chat of the uh, StreamYard so I can post it? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Matter of fact, let yeah, me do send, that. I'm going to yeah, open it up it. on my... Um, I'll send it from my phone. Yeah, you don't have to. Yeah, I'll, put, I'll, I'll post I'll it by the end of the show. Yeah, And then I'll, I'll post it. Yeah. I'll send it to my laptop. Indeed, yeah, yes. exactly. And while you do well, that, let me tell them a little bit about The Rock. I know. You know. Yes. The Rock was a student leader at Hunter College. Yes. With Dr. Jeffries and Sister Marimbaani fighting to set up the Black Studies program down there. Wonderful. I met him one day when he came up to City College when we were having a demonstration up there. Um, so this is almost 30 years ago. Um, when me and Dr. Jeffries and a few other community people moved to buy uh, a hotel in Ghana, which was offered to me by a beautiful father and a friend. Nana. And, and, and Nana Oku. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to do a project by myself. I wanted to share it with the rest of the black community, even if people can only put up $200, mm -hmm. they could buy into this thing and we do it. And and in and, and one year, we raised two years, we raised a million dollars and paid mm -hmm. for this thing outright. It was the largest Black American or African American business in Ghana. And for the most part, still is. We're closed now because of the COVID. And before that, the um, other poison they put into Africa. Um, but we're struggling to come back. It's a 30 room, beautiful complex. We've loaned 20 of the rooms to the government to help quarantine students at Cape Coast University because we're very close to the university. But me and Rock for 15 years worked putting up roof, putting down uh, driveway, uh, cleaning mm. up bushes, um, painting. Um, sometimes we would go to Ghana and tell my, our family we'd be back in two weeks and show back two months later. But we've been over there working and with no salary, you know, um, other than what we were able to Ghana to make sure he was taken care of. Um, he was one of those persons, like most people in our movement, the Malcolm X, the Kwame Ture, these men died without having any cachet because they gave everything they had to the movement. And this young man did the same thing. And he didn't know how to ask for help. Even if you offer help, he would not tell you he needed it. You had to just figure, I'm going to send him this, I'm going to do this. Um, but if anybody in the community needed anything, he was there teaching young people, trying to show the vendors how to organize politically and economically, um, trying to teach through videos, different economic formats. He was working on the Bitcoins and that whole piece for the last uh, year, mm -hmm. trying to find a way to make that work. And when you put all your time into this movement, you don't have resources because you give all the resources to the community. And many times our community doesn't have the generosity that many of its uh, activists have. The activists take care of the community, but rarely do the community take care of us. And so I'm very blessed because I came from a big Gullah Geechee um, extended communal family down south, and they've always had my back, you know. Um, everybody wouldn't be as lucky as me where when you become the imam, your mother become your cook. <laughs> to make sure you don't get poisoned, you know? Um, but Rock was just an extraordinary young man, helping other Bring young brother, getting their vending license, helping other people, putting together their vending products and, and how to find your space and protected them in the streets and, you know, trying to pull together an organization where those kinds of merchants can fuse together as one so that they could begin to fight against the police harassment and fight against the system mm -hmm. that tried to block them from making a living for themselves and their family, honestly. And so um, always a stand up person, always a go ahead person. Um, traveled with me to Africa, probably if we counted two, 15 years, three, four times a year, um, Sometimes we go to Ghana and wouldn't have $10 in our pocket when we get there. We'd earn some money once we got there. But we go like, like $10, $15. But Not we had to get there to go do this work because we were trying to create this project, which is still a project in motion. Mm -hmm. But we don't yeah. owe any bank or anything on that hotel. We're still trying to build and reopen. And so that's going to be his legacy. So we're going to do yeah. something with his name 
into the facility itself. Mm. Let's get to some Q&A before we get out of here, family. Give us some questions for the great professor and my brother, Nova Felder. Give me some questions, family. Let me see what's going on in the chat. All right. Uh, well, hold up, hold up. Please ask Baba James to speak on the East Baba Jitu oh, yeah. and the documentary shown at East. the BAM in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. well, I haven't seen the documentary, but I knew Baba Jitu oh, yeah. and, and, and the whole group of um, the East and that movement that went back, they were all partners with Malcolm X in fighting um, to, to um, get our curriculum taught in school. And when they couldn't get that done, they opened their own school mm -hmm. in Brooklyn and set a model for African-centered schools around the country. Um, extraordinary brother, fought from cradle to the grave, raised up so many young people. Um, when we see some of the young leaders and government today even affected the mayor that we have in New York today. Some of the other elected officials came through that school. Um, one of our strongest brothers um, and his wife were in, in politics today. They came through that school. Um, G2 was just one of those fantastic teachers who was tied up with the young Malefi Asante and tied up with a young Milana Karanga and tied up with a young Dr. Ben and Dr. Clark and they were youngster and in organizing and expanding into the National Black United Front and spreading the concept of African-centered thought across America. Um, he was just one of those great geniuses that we rarely see that can extend himself in that way. I think I met him at the first Black Studies Conference in 1967. Yeah, I go way back there in 1967 in Newark. At the, while the riots were going on, we were having a meeting. <laughs> How are we going to deal with the enemy? And and Brother Baraka, Mary Baraka, had been beaten and arrested that day. And I remember a young Francis Welsing and G2 in the room saying, we need to go break him out of jail. Mm. So he was that kind of spirit. All right, Professor. What, um, Sun Super wants to know, what about cremation as a way to send off our dead? The same thing, I don't see a great problem with cremation. I don't see in, in many African cultures, especially in the East, because we think African cultures just defined are confined to the continent. That's not true. Much of India is an African culture. Yes. Um, and cremation is a major part of how they um, resolve the body. The same thing you're dealing with is the three major elements of energy that shift from one to the other. Um, so people are spooked up with the Christian, white Christian attitude towards cremation, and they have not looked around the African world and the African Pacific world with hundreds of millions of Black people throughout the Pacific who participate in cremation as one of the ways. Even in the cultures where you see cremation, there are some others who opt for um, burial, but most may opt for cremation um, because it's simpler, it's, it's quicker, um again the the you're talking about energy shifting form i mean where do you go if the body is mostly water anyway heat's going to evaporate that immediately and then what's left um is going to turn in another form of energy use the gas and dissipate into the mm -hmm. same world and if you have ashes you sprinkle it into the ecology so it becomes the fertilizer that helps to grow the grass or the wheat or the trees or something the animals eat. You're still a part of the ecology and the cycle of, of life. All right, Professor. What uh, next question? What is the significance of wearing white, black, or any other color at a, at a life celebration? Well, it depends on the community and why they choose the colors at the time. There's no law. You can walk around butt naked. <laughs> we did that at one time too. Um, yes, we did that at one time. We didn't have all these cloth and stuff to put on, mm -hmm. you know? 
So our earliest clothes were some leaves from a tree that we thought we needed it or nothing at all. Mm. So don't get hung up on a particular thing. Different cultures have the, you know, in order to create a rhythm of order for themselves, create a science of order. So we'll do this with this color, we'll do this with this color. To create a science of order that can create continuity and how something gets done. But it varies between culture. In Ghana, where you put black and red, and in Nigeria with the Yoruba, where you put all white, mm -hmm. it isn't either or. You can wear whatever you want. Even in Ghana, where you have black and red, half of the people are not wearing black and red, and nothing happens to them. You know? So um, it's, it's, it's as we create our cultural stability and trying to create a certain order and a certain synchronicity we uh, um, assign these things like this color this shape this size mm. but if you walk around with no clothes on at all what difference is it gonna make in the western world gonna find a woman for showing her breast feeding a child on a train mm. the most natural and humane thing a human being could do mm. but we, that's a sick world yet he'll rape to get at that same breast mm. for himself. Damn, brother. Yeah. Let's get to the next question. We're going to take about uh, four or five more questions, family, before we get out of here. Is there a such thing as an enemy since we are all the creator having a human experience, my brother? <laughs> the, yes. The enemy is to be unconscious of the consciousness. Yes. Yes. To be unconscious of the yeah, consciousness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The enemy is the ignorance among you, especially an ignorance that is maintained when there's a possibility to access knowledge that would lead to a greater consciousness. So that when someone feels that I would rather be stimulated by certain things and I need money to do that, even though I know I could have a more unified and peaceful environment for the sake of my own creature comfort stimulation, mm. I will go against the knowledge of higher consciousness. Yes, that's an enemy. Yes. The I very word itself. And in me. That that means evil. When when you want when you say the devil, if you look it up in the Western dictionary. It is the doer of that which is mm -hmm. anti-nature. Mm -hmm. And I would add it with deliberacy. Mm -hmm. That's an enemy. Because there's an option to not do that. You, are, you know that if you go left, we would have a more harmonious environment. But you may not have the great abundance you want. So you would sacrifice the harmonious env environment Just to have you. a great abundance based on your greed. That's an enemy. I think you explained it, Professor, perfectly earlier when you spoke about um, the drama between Shango, Oya, and 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 the, and the like. Because that that is, you know, the reality. When you choose these things that you know are not good for the collective, sometimes we choose things that we know are not physically or spiritually, even um, mentally, or good for us, right? Um, we choose drug use. We choose to eat bad diets. So I think the the battle is always about the enemy within. Some some dramas and uh, mythologies and mythos will talk about. You know, it's the one about the scientist Yakub uh, creating a white man in the, in a lab and all of these things that had to do with that's the, you know dealing with the consciousness um, yeah. that we had forgotten the maat that yeah. we didn't we forgot to walk in. And I, and, I, and I argue a lot of times with our brothers and sisters to start getting away from the dogma that we've adopted with the different uh, belief systems that we've been steeped in and start to just barely, you know, just solely look at the, the real situations. How did we get here? You know, um, I encourage everybody to read Chancellor Williams' work, uh, The Destruction of Black Civilization. I, I encourage us to to study and go back to the continent of Africa. Me and Professor could probably talk about the struggles that we, we've had in reintegrating ourselves in different ways on the continent in different places. And um, that's what, what the, the enemy within 
um, is manifested itself in the physical characters of the individuals and people that we point out and call enemies. But until we start dealing with the enemy within, that enemy without is going to continue um, to berate us and put us in ghettos and uh, shoot us down in the streets. Nature uh, and yeah. cosmology. Yeah. Nature and cosmology. The laws of nature is what the ancestors called the laws of God. Yes. It's the laws of nature as interpreted. Yes. Someone has come along that is less developed. Yes. You don't need lying about it. We can play and say we all call it what God. it is. But some uh some of the mutations that have occurred have created deficiency. And that deficient person that is the result of natural mutation has taken over the leadership of the world. They don't have the capacity to understand the extent of consciousness and spirituality. And unless we take the world back from them, the chaos that we experience every day will continue to be nature and nature itself is under attack. Mm. When you drilling and getting all out of the ground, you, you're attacking nature. When you're digging up and poisoning the earth with mercury to get gold, you're attacking nature. When you're polluting the earth and the soil and the air, you're mm. attacking nature. That's an enemy, enemy. of the divine itself. Straight it is a behavioral uh, attack. That, that it's the behavior based on ignorance or even a conscious effort not to be conforming mm. to the laws of nature. So they are enemies, and that's part of what we are here to do is to bring things back to the perfection. That's what reincarnation is constantly about. Let's do a redo. You know, in the movies, if something go wrong on the stage, in the theater, rather, they always say when something go wrong, what do they say? Go to Cut. black. Mm -hmm. Go to black, turn off all the lights, turn off all the black. sound, go to black and get it right, come back again. So you're telling us go to black? Go to black. Mm. Indeed, indeed. Let's get to a few more questions before we get out of here. Um, let's see. Uh, I just seen a question. I don't know. Uh, somebody said, uh, Professor, is the real Egypt a in America, along with Atlantis. What's your thoughts on that? No, don't get caught up on false white people mythology that we've adopted. You know, where's Atlantis? Nobody has found anything of it except in some white folks writing in ancient Greece. Right? So let that stuff go. The real Egypt is right there in Africa. When they were calling it Egypt, they were actually, this was the white man's word. Egypt is his, the European, the mutations, the mutant word. <clears throat> he was referring to the entire continent. And right. then he would, earlier he, he called the entire continent Ethiopia. That's mm -hmm. the outsider okay. referring to us. That's the mutant coming out of the ice. Let's be real. They was an ice age hundreds, almost 200,000 years. Some people got trapped up there and they mutated to survive. We call them Europeans today. You can't change that, that's history. The mutant became deficient in order to survive. Now that deficient mutant is running the world. I don't mean to disrespect nobody, I just mean to talk truth. Let's talk about the scientific truth about what we're dealing with. America, like most continents, this is a new phenomenon. All these things were slammed up against each other at one point in the life cycle of this place we call the planet Earth, which is just another thing in outer space. We are space aliens like everybody else. The planet Earth is spinning around in space just like Mars and Jupiter and Saturn and so forth. So we are as much aliens to the people on Saturn as the, or the life form on Saturn as they would be to us. We live in outer space. This planet we live on is spinning around in outer space. Let's mm -hmm. try to focus on our reality. The human being is African, black on black and black, black, blue. All of us brown ones, through and through. ones we are shades of black. Mm. 
but there is a source to our shades. And you see it all over Sudan and Central Africa, that black is blue. Mm. They're the beginning. We are the offshoot mutants, but we have some extreme mutations that came back out of the ice, angry and bitter with nature, angry and bitter with us for what nature did to them. And they declared war on God itself, meaning on the universe and the earth. And the black man is representative of the essence of human being. And so he declared war on us. That's real. We've lived in, um, if we lived everywhere in the world, and we're the Aborigine everywhere in the world, what is so shocking for people to find out that we were Aborigine in North America as well? If we have Aborigines all over Central South America, all over the Pacific Islands, all over Asia, all over North Africa, Pole. what is so surprising that we were also in what is now called the United States? What we're getting is, is not surprising. What we're getting is people who are still finding an excuse to reject Africa as their essence. Essence, yes. With no proof to back them up. Mm. Teach, Professor. You know. But See, anyway. Professor, uh, DNA wants to know, can we take the world back with or without the gun? Yeah, Is we're taking it back. And we're doing it without the gun. You know. That's why they got so panic and chemic the other day when, when the happy group was trying to come there and do what oh, they yeah. were doing. But there's nothing they can do. The world would only be in order again when we take it back again. And they would want us to use the gun because that's his master. He got that. He's the master. You're, gonna, you're not going to beat him at that. All right. Mm -hmm. We tried in the 60s and they wiped us out at the door. You understand? You're not going to beat All him right. at that. You may need to use it for some strategic things. You're going to beat them with this. Mm -hmm. You're going to beat them doing what this brother said right here. You're going to beat them by rebirthing African consciousness. Mm. And you can't rebirth African consciousness without a, a knowledge of African history, mm. African culture, and African sacred science, which we call spirituality. Mm. I prefer to call it African sacred science. Take our science back. He took our sacred science and called it his science. And then we said, we don't have nothing to do with it because that's his thing. He didn't create physics. He didn't create geometry. Mm -mm. He didn't create, create astrology. He didn't create astronomy. We created all of that as a part of our sacred science. He stole it and made it his science. And then we rejected going in for some boogeyman, juke -juke Spookism. Stuff or religion. Spookism. Spookism. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. Let's get back to reality. Yes, Black people were in America before the the Asiatic got here. Simple. We were everywhere before anybody else got there. That's not something big or unusual. No. Stop using it as a way to try and divide the one. You can't divide the gun. You know, you know, Professor, what I say is that African people have many expressions of African culture. And we've mm -hmm. lived every in every terrain. We are all terrain beings. We've lived in the the first royals in Europe are African. Mm -hmm. the, the, the first people to step foot in, in the North Pole was a black man, even a hundred and something years ago with Henson. These things should not, like you said, surprise us that, and then we take on these characters of this sickness of, of, of this enemy that, that we've been living with in close proximity for 500 years to believe mm -hmm. in that disease. We kind of got the Patty Hearst syndrome. We keep playing this same dead record over and over fighting what is in you. I keep saying to my people, you have to understand your culture to become what we need to become to deal with this gun. That's my and, brother and, DNA. Yeah, Nick and telling this that yeah. all culture is trying to interpret the same laws of the universe yes. and of nature. Yes. But different environments give you different tools to work with. That's it. And we get confused by the tool. Yeah. Instead of the essence of what the tool was yes. designed to teach. That's the dogma. You know, look at my face. Mm -hmm. And one look will tell you that I'm part of the native people Come here. Come on, straight up. Okay. I know who I am. Yeah. I know where they're buried. We used to clean the mounds when I was a child. Mm. You bury in the hill, the mounds. 
Mm. That's what my grandfather used to take us to clean them. Yeah. I'm from the Chikora Nation, mm -hmm. but I'm also from the Congo Nation, yes. Angola Nation, Yoruba Nation, Igbo Nation, and Akan Nation. Mm -hmm. With a big with, with my mitochondria on my mother's side coming from Sierra Leone and the Manding. The, the, yes, people. the Mandi people. So, but we are all of them. Yes. That's what makes the African American kind of unique. It's because we're, we're, we're a collection of almost every African cultural and ethnic group on the continent. Straight up. As well as those that we found here. We absorb them. There's a book by Leron Bennett mm -hmm. called The Shaping of Black America. America, yeah. The Shaping it. of Black America by Leron Bennett. There's a chapter in there called The Black and the Red. Mm -hmm. And they'll tell you when the white folks realize, oh my goodness, all these black folks living here in these villages didn't look like the one we brought on the ships from Africa. So let's raid the village and enslave all of them. So know the story. Know the history. I'm a maroon, but we didn't call it maroon over here. You know? Both sides of my family was from what you would call the maroon community in the Caribbean. You know? And and so when and here over here they call them the Freewood Negroes. So um, study history. It'll erase the mystery. Indeed. Yeah. Uh, last question. I'm going to ask this last question before we get out of here. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. We're about to be at the two-hour mark. Um, it's been a great discussion about the concept of life, the African perspective of life after death, and just spirituality in general. Professor, uh, we talked about, you know, this, this creator having a human experience. And we use words in our culture, like know thyself and go within to discover who you are. Right. Now, professor, if I go within, now that, that, that sounds great. That sounds beautiful. So kumbaya-ish. But what if I go within and I discover I'm this big, bad motherfucker and I, I want to be the biggest drug dealer in the world? Now, it may sound ignorant to people watching, but if this is a movie, the movie needs a bad guy. So what if I discover through no, knowing thyself and through reflection that I'm the bad guy, professor? What are you, somebody who's supposed to be a good, this good uh, priest? What you going to tell me, nigga? I'm the bad guy in the movie. What I will you do gonna my tell best me, to recycle you back to the ancestral realm to be cleaned up again. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you a story. Come on, man. No. He said, he said, I'm going to recycle you, man. Come, back again. Come, again. Come, again. Come again. Come again. Professor. Professor, man. Come on, man. Look at this one. Oh. You're the history and culture. Get that. Right? Blow it up, Rich. And this yeah, one, right. oh, you're the oh. history and culture. See if you can see yes, that. Sir. This was one of my teachers, Professor Dr. Akin Jobin, who's now an ancestor. Get this little book. It will blow your mind because it has a whole chapter in there by death, right, and life. Mm -hmm. And it has a chapter in there by recycling. When you go back to the ancestors, you just don't go and hang out, right? Mm -hmm. They clean you up. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So some people sometimes are sent back a little earlier than others. It's like that. They need a little more cleaning. You know what I'm saying? A little more cleaning. So, mm -hmm. and, and they even have a system in the Yoruba system. You know, this is a complex topic we're dealing with. But part of the topic is that, um, that you have to come back and forth eight times before you complete the cycle where you can go back and return to the universe and not have to come back again, mm. you know? And, and so in the eight times, you got 12 steps you must master in character development. So there's some people at the low end of that, where they could be the drug dealers or the killers. You understand? Mm -hmm. um, but you got to recycle your way up. But each yeah. time you come back here, you got to go through growth and transformation of consciousness. So you, when you come back, you come back at a higher level. Now, see, somebody says, every culture needs some badass niggas. That may be true if they're aiming their guns at the right target. So you're not mm. a badass mm. nigga if you're shooting mm. down women and babies from your community in the street, mm. okay? Mm. You're not a badass nigga if you're destroying the very foundation that others are trying to build so even your badass nigga's babies can have a better world, see? Mm. The mm. concept yeah. 
that's why when we study the culture, we see the concept of a Shango as a king, the mm. concept of an Ogun as a warrior. We got to realize what are the characteristics, what made up the character of those people, what were the transformation process. That's what the metaphor and allegories are trying to teach us. Mm. 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 But if you yeah. go to the ignorant zone, mm. that's where the mutant is trying to keep you. Mm. See, mm -hmm. if you don't know your history, you're caught in the mutant mystery. Mm. And when you're caught in the mutant oh, mystery, mutant, you mutant, uh, what he said, Professor, what you say? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't just slip. Don't just go. What you say? Repeat <laughs> yeah, that again. Come on, man. If you don't oh, know your history, history, you're caught in the mutant mm -hmm. mystery. Mm -hmm. And if you're caught in the mutant oh, mystery, oh, you can't even find yourself in history. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's the deal. Real talk, Professor. Hey, hey, man. On, on that, we closing out strong. We closing out real strong. This was a magnificent show. Uh, wow, man. I'm talking about magnificent. I'm, I'm, I'm high off of this conversation right now. I'm I literally, I'm high off of this conversation. Rock is here, Professor. Yeah, yeah. The, the spirit yeah. of my brother yeah, Rock is definitely here. He, he's here. That was his thing, getting the history and the knowledge to people, man. Yes, he indeed. Was telling, he was always on top of any new history tape, any new history book. He was out there on the street on selling it. the books and selling the tapes. And he was ahead of me in a lot of that, introducing mm. me to new conversation. Mm. Not just the scholars, you know? Mm, mm. Because know the truth comes right out of Kemet. Know the truth, and it's the truth that will set it's you. Make you free. Mm. Malcolm says truth alone will set you free. Not Allah, mm -mm. not God, not Jesus. Truth, truth, truth mm. alone will set you free. Mm. What is the truth? The truth is the experience of your ancestors. That's what you call history. Mm. Your ancestral experience is your history, and it will resolve the mutant mystery. Mm. Resolve. Oh, resolve. Oh. Hey, leave, 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 leave another leave, one on that. Leave, leave your contact info, both of y'all, before we get out of here. Let them know how they could get in contact with y'all if they want to support a cash app, anything, y'all, both of y'all. Well, right now, we want any support to go Focus. to Rock. Oh, but yeah, oh no, you know what? Uh the GoFundMe. All right, let me put family. Yeah, I'm, GoFundMe. yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. Uh it's okay. Let me put the GoFundMe right now, family. This show is dedicated to my brother Rock. And if you've been watching the show, you've heard uh Professor James Small as well as uh Nova speak on the brother Rock. I just put the GoFundMe information in the chat. Where did it go? Is it, uh just put it in there. Okay. Yeah. If you would like to donate, go to www.gofundme.com slash F slash rocks dash celebration dash of that. You get it. It's right there. It's right there. Uh, <laughs> it's right there. Um, go to it. Support the brother. An amazing brother in the community. We're dedicating this show to him. And, uh, you know, the, the, the financial, we want a lot of this financial support to go to this GoFundMe right now, family. So yeah. if you enjoyed this episode, this episode was inspired by his spirit, yes. partly by his spirit. So show some recep... What do you say that word? Recepro Reciprocity. Reciprocity. Reciprocity to his spirit. Yeah, I'll be yeah. confused. To his spirit and um, give, give the brother a, a small or big Please donation, do. whatever you can, yeah. family. Yeah. But uh, go ahead, uh, close it out, uh, Nova yeah. and Professor Small, so, before we get out of here. So I want to tell... Yes. Um, Professor, people on if they're on Facebook, they can follow you at Sana Lodge, right? Yeah, Sana Lodge or James Small. Just or James, James Small. Small. That's Small. Can go S. Professor right. Small African World.com. Yes. And that'll take them him. to my Facebook page. Professor Please follow Small. him, support yeah. Professor Small. He is a pillar, as you guys have seen. He is, I mean, he's helped me and my family through so many um great times and hard times. Um, and he needs that that constant um, just level of energy coming from uh, younger people, younger than even me. Because you, as you can see, Rich remember me without this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Please, we Professor, was in our remember 20s. Me probably when I was we went like, to a club <laughs> like this big. Now I'm like his height. But um, you can follow me on my Instagram at Harlem Ensemble. Um, you can follow my organization. Bridging Africans and Black Americans. Uh, we do work on the ground and produce educational uh, programs. And um, you know, we're here. Uh, me and you know, me and Professor have been together for years now. Professor, I'm going to tell you, Rock was your son. As always, I am your son. 
And whatever big energy that I can bring, Rock taught me a lot. I'm gonna bring it with you to Ghana, and we'll put all of our Nana and all of our Harlem and Street and everything, and do what we need to do going forward. People texting me now saying, "I want to go to the hotel. I want this all already." Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah, go to ProfessorSmallAfricanWorld.com. We will be doing a tour to Benin, Togo, Ghana, yeah. in the last week of August, first week, last week of July, I will first be week of August of this year. We will be there. Yes, sir. Yes, so hey, 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 family, and with that being said, this is Brother Rich, Brother Nova, uh, the elder, Professor James Small. We mm -hmm. want to thank you for tuning in. We got about 1,400 of you left. We've been on here for two hours. Thanks for staying with us this long, enjoying the show. Thank you, uh, Yeah, yeah, man. Thank so you, we brother. Get, Love indeed, yourself, indeed. know yourself. Yes. Love yourself, know you. And remember, your history is simply the experience of your ancestors. your ancestors. And you are your ancestors. You are your ancestors. Don't get it when twisted. your father and mother had sex, which the white man want to make having sex profane, oh, it's beautiful. when they had sex, mm -hmm. they were that aspect of the divine that creates. The only way God or the divine creates is a man and a woman mm -hmm. have sex, OK? Mm -hmm. Indeed. And, then, and what do they do? They recreate themselves. Mm. You take that backwards, God first recreated itself as a man and a woman, and they kept populating the rest of the earth. Yes. It is so easy when you know the truth, and you can laugh at the devil trying mm. to mm. do with his mystery. Talk, talk to them. Talk to them. Talk to them. Teach you professor. have your history. <laughs> Teach professor. I love this. I you swear I love this. Me. Mutant mysteries, you heard yo. yo. I ain't never gonna forget that, no. Yes. here, black magic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Rich. it was yo. first said here. That's the first time I used it that way. Oh, that's the first I time. Know. That's the first time. You and Miss Wild. Hey, yo, an amazing show. Share this, fam. Don't this sure. what? Don't just watch this to keep it to yourself. Share this with your family and friends. They need to hear this. Sure. They need to hear how we're we're fearful of death, and there's nothing to be scared of. Yeah, let me show. You. Like I did the last time, I want to show the good Christian brothers and sisters. Christianity, like Judaism and Islam, are nothing more than fragments from the periphery of the African sacred science system. Mm -hmm. Fragments from the periphery of the system. Right. And if you study it, you see Kemet all over it. Mm -hmm. And since everybody know the Last Supper, I'll close with this. You got to picture the Last Supper. Mm -hmm. You got a guy sitting in the middle of the table with a halo around his head. That's Ra, all right? Mm -hmm. He's got 12 dudes around the table. That's the 12 months circulating around the sun, Ra. Mm -hmm. And then in the 12 dudes, they've broken into four pieces of three people only talking to each other. Those are the four seasons. Mm -hmm. It is your solar drama story being taught with anthropomorphic European symbolisms without explaining the truth. Astrotheology, mm -hmm. straight up. Ooh, astro theology. Straight Talk up. to them, Nova. That's the best way to say it. Nova. Yes, sir. Perfect word, Nova. Astro theology, man. What it is. Family, it, it don't get no better than tonight's show. I, thank you, Nova. Thank you, Professor James. Thank once you. Again. Brother Rich, we getting out of here, family. We will see you next time. Peace.